welcome to christ the king lutheran church especially our our guests and visitors that are here with us today i would say happy halloween well i will say it happy halloween but happy reformation day that we are also celebrating here today and observing an event in history the the lutheran reformation the reformation of the church but it's not about luther and it's not about germans and it's not about any uh clash of denominations it's supposed to always be about christ our savior so as we begin our worship today we begin with hymn number 506 glory be to god the father please rise Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins Amen. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of reflection upon our lives, and most especially on God's word and promises. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. 
As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly the intro. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, Come O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord.
pray together the collect of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading for the festival of the Reformation is from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forth as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. <coughs> this was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will become free. Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Our sermon uh, hymn for today is A Mighty Fortress, and it just doesn't fit on one page. So I apologize. Uh, maybe you can open it up or something. Uh, A Mighty Fortress, hymn 656. <laughs>
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text today from John 8, verses 31 and following, uh, our gospel lesson we read earlier. Today is Reformation Day, which essentially says that we are observing that on, 30, on October 31st, 1517, so 504 years ago by now, right? Uh, Martin Luther took the 95 theses and nailed them to the church door. All right. Now, what do we do with that? Right now, if you know the story, we can explain it further. There was uh, the theses were a series of talking points that he wanted to debate over the value and the worth of the sale of indulgences. An indulgence is a certificate that says you're forgiven, and so you can buy it for the right price. Forgiveness. Okay. And so he said, I want to talk about this, and he nailed it to a church door. Uh, we can use post-it notes on our glass door. Okay. Um, <laughs> But that was just the bulletin board of the day. But it was more than that. The Reformation itself is can be seen as a series of dates when notable thing ha things happened. In 1521 was the Diet of Worms, where Luther said, Here I stand, right, on the, the teachings of Scripture. That's essentially what's happening there. 1525 was notable for them. A priest, Martin Luther, got married. Okay, and they got over that eventually. Uh, and then in 1528, the, or 1529, Martin Luther writes his small and large catechisms for instruction of the Christian faith in the Christian home. In 1530, the Augsburg Confession is written, which is basically the final uh, 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 document that they, we said, this is what we will teach, our churches will teach. And, and the Roman Catholic Church said, well, then you're going to leave the Roman Catholic Church. And there's much more to say, and there's much history to say, and I have books on it if you want it, okay? But the Lutheran Reformation is not just to be a history lesson of what happened 500 years ago. It's not just to say, hey, we love Martin. It's not just to, to uh, buy foam fingers and, and wave them in the air, okay? There's more to it than that is why, why did it happen? What happened that this made such a notable event? It was that God was leading the church to seize the truth of the scriptures again. And, and no accusations against anyone, but over the course of 1,500 years, the, the church had become uh, a little bit lost and off-center of the basic truths of the scriptures. And one of the hard parts was that it just couldn't be provided in every home. You know, the printing of the scriptures was at first a hand printing and just could only be done so very so seldomly. And so the, the struggle to provide the scriptures into every Christian's home was word of mouth, was what would be taught. And, and here in the Lutheran Reformation, they're finding out that we need to teach what the scriptures say, not man's opinion anymore. And so this is where we, we come into our gospel reading today. Jesus is saying, if you abide in my word, my teachings, if you abide in my word, you are a disciple. You are truly one of my disciples. He says, you will know the truth. And then this, this is a phrase our, even our culture knows. And the truth will set you free. We love that. We love to hear that the truth sets us free, Right. And so he says, come, essentially, stay in my teachings, stay in my word, in the word of Jesus Christ, in what the scriptures have said. But it's going to get even, even deeper than that, not just to look at this as an instruction booklet. Okay, how do we fulfill page 802? How do we fulfill page 934? How do we... Check the boxes. It's going to be even more than that. To hear the word of Christ, he says, you'll know what is true. You will know the truth. The truth of Jesus Christ, who does say, I am the way, the life, and the truth. The way, the truth, and the life. Whoever comes to me, uh, no one comes to the Father except through me. So back to the Bible. Back to the truth. And this is what happened during this time. 
that the pastors were seeking the scriptures ever more fervently and seeing what it really taught in there. And that the families, through the catechism and then through the Bible, which had been written in German, finally, through Martin Luther, that they were getting to read it for themselves and read the scriptures. And so back to the Bible, and they got to see the truth of Christ. And even more than saying, I finally understand page 760, is to say, I finally see Christ. To come back to his word is even to come back to the truth, and the truth is Christ, who is the word, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and was God. To come back to the scriptures, to come back to the Bible, is to come back to Christ. And they saw Christ ever more clearly in every page of the scriptures. They saw what Romans 3 teaches us today. They saw that in Christ, every one of us finds redemption, justification, propitiation, which is another word for forgiveness, um, and, and finds eternal life in Christ. And that that's needed because, as Romans 3 would say, this is what every human needs because we are all standing guilty under the law. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Our sins are what make us so in need of a Savior, Jesus Christ. Romans 3 makes that so very clear. To come back to the scriptures is to come back to Christ, even as our uh, lesson from Revelation would say, an eternal gospel that must be proclaimed to all the world. This is not to be something that we keep in our churches, not to be something that we keep in our ethnic groups or whatever they may be. This is something that is to be taken to every tribe, nation, language, and tongue. Every gathering of people should hear of Jesus Christ. We have this eternal gospel, and we want all to know it. And Jesus is saying, and when you, when you come back, when you are in the scriptures, when you are in the word of Christ, you are actually in Christ, the truth, and the truth sets you free. The Pharisees didn't understand. <clears throat> Uh, and, and so many people through life didn't under uh, through history didn't understand, and, and maybe those who were contending contending against Luther didn't understand. The Pharisees say, "Well, slavery? Why would we not be free? We've never been slaves to anyone." Now, historically, uh, Egypt. Right? Uh, the, the Jewish people were slaves in Egypt, right? Now, and they could say, well, we've been taken into exile in Babylon and Assyria and Persia. Um, but they've never had to give up being Hebrews in the Old Testament. They never had to give up being Jewish. They never had to lose their, even their identity. And so they say, how? Well, we've never been slaves to anyone. And Jesus takes it beyond that. I'm not talking about all of the people. I'm talking about each one of you individually, he says. He says, if you sin, you are a slave to sin. You are a slave to your own behavior. You are a slave to your own sinful nature. If you sin, you're just stuck in that. He says, but the Son will, be, will set you free. Jesus says, a slave has no certainty, no assurance, no confidence that anything is assured to him. You know, nothing is promised about tomorrow will often be said. And a slave knew that because one wrong step could have meant that they were done. They were no longer under the service of their master, which you might say it's nice to be free, but it could mean that they had no other way to provide. It could mean that uh, being done meant the end of their life. It could mean that one wrong step meant beatings or whippings, right? Uh, what is it to be a slave but to be only at service and never necessarily in any confidence that anything else is promised. But if you're in the family, you're the son and you, you, you're never gonna be out of that, right? That's what Jesus says. The, the slave is only a slave, but a son gets to stay in the family. 
But what Jesus is, is the Son of God who sets the slave free. Sets the slave free. This is the message to the Pharisees. And this is what was rediscovered in the Reformation. Was coming back to the scriptures saying, Christ sets us free. Up until this point, knowing who Jesus Christ is, any person in life will simply be stuck only in their sins. But Christ says those sins are, for, are forgiven. You are forgiven of your sins. And Christ says that sin is paid for. The punishment is done. I took it to the cross, is the message of Christ. And while I died, I still rose again. I am victorious over death and sin and Satan. That is the message of Christ. That is the message that we find when we come back to the scriptures. When we come back to the scriptures, we don't just say, let's go back to 1517 and remind ourselves of that. But let's keep going for another 1500 years. Let's go back to the scriptures. Let's see the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this doesn't just say, see, I'm so happy what happened 500 years ago. Reformation says, I'm so happy what God does in my life today. He reforms me. Whereas in, during the 1500s, people were not seeking just to get out of the church. They were wanting to reform it, to come to bring it back to biblical teachings. What does God want to do for you through the Holy Spirit? Not just to leave you out, but to reform you back to the biblical teachings, back into his word, back into Christ, to bring you back into reconciliation with God, to bring you back to Christ. So in our lives today, this is the Reformation Sunday where we say this is what God does for you and for me. Not just 500 years ago, but what does God do for me? He does Romans 3. He does John 8. He sets us free because he gives us his word, which tells us the truth. And that tr truth tells us of Christ, a Savior, where we might rack ourselves with guilt every day for our sins, where we might not ever know if there's any other way to get away from God's wrath. The scriptures will say, yes, and that way is Christ. And that way is finished for you. You are free indeed in Christ, the Son, your Savior. Oh, we wear red today not because it's German or Lutheran, right? And, and we wear red today not because of, of uh, any other historical thing. We wear red today because it's in the church, the history or the color of the Holy Spirit and the blood of the martyrs. And, and this is the work of God among us. So this is not today to say, look how Lutheran we are, but look at what God does for us in Christ. We want every denomination to know the truth of the scriptures. Not only that, just saying what do denominations do, but I want to know the truth of Christ in the scriptures. And I want the guy next to me and the guy behind me and my neighbor across the street to know the truth of Christ. To know that in him, we're not stuck. In slavery to sin. It can bind us. It can wrap us up and kill us with guilt. Slavery to sin can lie to us so that we think that we're the most important thing in the world. Or it can tear us down thinking that we have absolutely no hope of any grace from a merciful God. <clears throat> but in Christ, in the truth, in his word, the message is made so clear. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but are justified freely by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It's one whole sentence. Don't just stop at the comma. And are justified freely through faith in what God has done in Christ, your Savior. Sure, we look back to 500, or 500 years ago, Sure, we look back to the scriptures, we look to the truth, we look back to Christ, but that doesn't just say keep looking back. It says go forward, forward in God's word, go forward in God's truth, go forward in your life in Christ because 
you are free and free indeed from all that will try to bind you without Christ, hope, or salvation. It's undone. You are free in Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue on page 9 in our folder as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. Please write. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the comfort of the gospel restored to your church on earth through the work of Martin Luther and other faithful pastors and leaders during the Reformation, we implore you, defend your church from all enemies of your saving word. Cause your eternal gospel to be proclaimed in our time to every nation, tribe, language, and people on earth. Graciously preserve your truth for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, make us truly your disciples. Keep us in your word, free us from all errors, and make our homes and families peaceful. Preserve all fathers and encourage them for their godly task, that children would be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on our nation. Give us good and faithful rulers who will govern after your good pleasure. Give us comfort in a right understanding of your rule in this world, that we would not be deceived to think earthly powers will last forever, but have confidence in you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers for the sick, the joyful, and those in any need. Especially today, we pray for Peggy, Lois, Christine, Janine, Judy, and Lisa, for Dave, Jim, Barbara, Isabel, and Roma. For Chris, Maria, Kathy, Kathy, and Angela. For Marjorie, Eliza, and for Barbara. We pray, Lord, that you would answer their prayers, preserve them by your promises, and bring them safely through this world to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us by your word out of the darkness of error and into the light of your grace. Mercifully help us to walk in that light. Guard us from error and false doctrine. And grant that we do not become ungrateful and despise your word, but receive it with all our heart. Conduct our lives according to it and put our trust in your grace. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive the offering.
you rise and continue with the offertory on page 10. Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The body of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of your sins.
Good morning and welcome to Christ the King Lutheran Church. A happy Reformation Day to all of you. And if, if, if you're young at heart, happy Halloween too. Right? Um, I'd like to direct your attention to the announcement pages uh, for a few announcements. Uh, today is our Oktoberfest luncheon after worship, after I stop talking. Um, if we could get some able-bodied people to help with the tables and chairs, that would be wonderful. Uh, to get the, everything set up for us there. And uh, so we invite everyone to stay for the luncheon. Looks good, smells good. And there's even some drinks for the older bunches in here. Uh, if you drink responsibly, okay? You know what I mean by all that. Uh, there are other announces, uh, announcements here uh, regarding our voters meeting, our congregational meeting coming up in two weeks. Uh, Charlie, we have tentative budgets for those who might want to talk to Charlie about that or you can email him as well for that. Um, a number of other announcements are here for your perusal. Uh, for your, uh, they are important. Please take them home and, and uh, look through them. Uh, I'd like to make a couple of other announcements uh, just very quickly. In, in uh, Bible class, we watched a video that someone had made that just was like a report on everything that LCMS teaches. And it was great, it was really good. They worked really hard to pack a lot into 23 minutes. Uh, I got to I got to stick up for one of my professors though. He quote he quoted one of my professors, Doctor. Uh, well, he said Doctor Mantufel, Mantufel. Um, well, he's my professor, and I like him, so I have to say that his name is Manteuffel, right? <laughs> he's got a good German name, so Manteuffel. Uh, by the way, if you have a good a different ethnicity name, that's good too. Uh, but I just got to stick up for one of my professors. Uh, so there was a good video. If you need to know more about it or want to ask about it, ask me afterwards. Um, I had something else I was supposed to say that's escaping me at this time. Are there any other announcements? Uh, let us before dinner or before lunch uh, ask the Lord's blessings for our meal. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have uh, given us the gospel of Jesus Christ for our life and our salvation and our freedom. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would also at this time bless the meal that we are about to receive. Uh, bless those who have worked hard to prepare it. Uh, bless those who have brought it. And also, Lord, bless the fellowship time that we have with one another most especially. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, one last comment. All right, this is what I knew. Uh, our, our youth confirmation class, we are finishing up our, the Luther video today, the 2003 movie. Uh, so at 1130, uh, youth confirmation in there. Okay? God's blessings on your day and your week. <clears throat>